And how long have you lived in this house? Me? Yeah. Before you were born. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 60, 90, 60, wow. we moved in here. Okay. And what year did you come to Canada again? In 1953. It was 53, okay. If you ask me how I survived, I cannot even tell you. Yeah, well, thanks, just, thanks for sharing your story. It wasn't easy. Yeah. I say the book is written with tears. Yeah. And I am, um, you know, when the book starts to get around, lots of people phone me and to tell me how wonderful it is. When the war started, and we already knew what's happening, not me, but you know, so they so organized some groups to, when they come to take you, to have some ammunition to fight back. So on July 18, it was a young group, and I got to know one girl, just, she just wanted to get close to me and to find out what a kind girl I am. And then she realized I'm, you know, I'm a good girl. I'm not going to do anything bad. So she said to me, would you do me a favor? I said, yes, yeah, sure. She said, I have a little package. I'm going to give you a little package to take me like 18. Mm -hmm. She said, somebody will open the door. Don't talk. Don't try to get into the apartment. Hand over the package and run down. The German, some Germans came to grab them so they wouldn't, they fought back, they killed two Germans. Then the Germans, they wanted to, they should come out to surrender. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. but they knew when they're going to surrender what, what will happen. So they didn't, so they burned down the whole building with the kids in them. And now when you go to Poland, it's a huge monument. From July 18. Wow. This lady says to my father, you know, the situation is so very bad. I'm going to take my kids and go into a bunker, to a huge, huge bunker. So my father says to this lady, her, she's in the book, Stella. So he says to her, if I send my daughter with you, will you take care of her? She said to my father, I will take care of your daughter the same way, but I'm going to take care of my kids. And I went with this lady with the two kids. Huge, huge bunker. was very, very well organized, but no food. It was nothing. We went without anything. And the little babies crying hungry, no diapers to change. I really was so upset why I came down. I said, Stella, would you let me go out from here? I cannot stand it here anymore. She said, I promise you, Father, to take care of you. I cannot let you go. I still remember the words, what I said to her. I said, Stella, you're taking good care of me, but I can't stand it anymore here. Let me go. She said, I'm sorry, I won't, I promise you nothing. Okay. After another couple of days, she saw how miserable. Not just, she calls me over. I still see her standing at the door. And she said, you still want to go out? I said, yes, Stella, yes, yes, yes. She said, but you have to promise me. If you see something not right, you come back. I said, yes, yes, yes. She opens the door, I hug her, and thank you, you let me go. I go out, I looked, I look, I don't see any opening. It's all very well organized, you didn't see any doors. I want to go back, like I say, I couldn't find. And it was not far away. I just couldn't see the door, or the opening. Where I was standing was one room, just where the drapes are, let's see, that far. It was a beautiful day. What I'm gonna do? My hair started to burn. I covered my face. I shouldn't see what's happening to me. My shoes start to burn. This lady, Stella, I heard she called my name. And she said, don't move, I'm coming. I said, yes, Stella, Stella, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. And she was a very tall lady, so we pushed her out from the window. I handed over the two kids to her, and then they pulled me out. We went out. 
We don't see nobody. Complete none. We start to walk a little bit. We stopped, but it was some bushes. We were standing. I was standing like I sit here. And then I feel some something's touching my shoulder. So I was sure the bushes. When I turn my head, what I saw, I just looked down. Oh, it's not a hole, so to jump in. Two Germans with the rifles. I cannot describe you how we felt with the two Germans. And that's touches. when you were captured, right? Yeah. Yes. And then I knew already a little German. So he asked me, where are you coming from? But there's all the stuff, but I wasn't going to tell them. They were in the bunker. With a rifle, he checked us. Oh, we don't have an ammunition. He said, walk. I walked on the left side. Stella, we couldn't walk together. Stella with the two kids, like this gentleman, this way, while we were walking with the rifles on our back. And I said to Stella, Stella, I don't want to die. I'm too young to die. But she didn't answer. Her tears were running. She knew what was going to happen. We walk, we walk for quite a few minutes. It took us to a huge building with our hands on the wall and they checked us. When we came into the Umschlag, I walked here and still have the two kids on this side. And the Germans already with the rifles ready. And they want to take away the kids from her. So she wouldn't let them. So they killed them all. And I was in the other group. I didn't walk. They pushed us. They pushed us. I screamed, Stella, Stella. I couldn't even go over to hug her. What I saw there, nobody should see it. But that went down. In the wagon, I met a one girl. She was 16 years old. And she didn't stop crying. And I said to her on the train, stop crying, don't cry, because everybody's in the same position. So she says to me, you know, I don't cry because I'm going to die. I just cry. They, kill, they killed my parents and my little brother because my, my little brother, they want to take away my little brother. So... You know, my parents wouldn't let them. And my father, he pushed in. He was a doctor, she says. He had the poison pills. He gave me one pill to hold on to it. So she said um, he wouldn't let them take their little brother. They killed him. So lots of people died by lying, of sitting in the mud because we knew we were going into the gas chamber. So one, the same thing. One German came out. He said, it's not gas. It's just regular showers. Don't kill yourself. So you know what we said between us? They want to have the pleasure to kill us. We walked. And this girl, I said, how are you going to swallow? You have no water. She said, my father told me, with the tears from your eyes, wet the pill and take it. Before you go in to the guest chamber, don't give them the satisfaction they killed you. Take the pill. And that's what she did. She put her head on my shoulder as she fell. And she took the pill. And the German, while we were going in, so between us, the girls, I said, we're going to suffer for a few minutes, but we won't be hungry anymore. It's going to be the end. No suffering anymore. When we got in close, he, they took us to one room. They said to get undressed, but don't take anything in when you go into the showers, only the shoes, because they knew everybody had something. Some people used to hide, whatever. So we followed the instructions. We didn't take anything, just the shoes. Yeah, when we went in, we were afraid to open because we touched the gas. So one girl, she said, I'm opening. And she started to yell, it's water, it's water, it's not gas. So we went in, we had a shower. We came out naked. So they started to throw some clothes. Whatever you got, catched, was used. Could be small or short, tiny or whatever. 
Then when we came out, almost naked, we had to sit again in the mud. The barracks weren't ready. And still they didn't feed us anything. And how long were you at that? Two months. Two months there. Two months, yeah. Okay. Then they started to give us one slice of bread, no water. We had no washrooms. They made us stick in the mud a hole to use as a washroom. No murals, no water, just one slice of bread. What they made us to do and what our work was, there was lots and lots of stones just to make us miserable. We had to carry from one place to another. When this was empty, we carried it back, back and forth, back and forth. So you left there after yeah, two after months, and, and how, how did you go to the next Yeah, place? okay. After two months, it was announcement. It was one, one huge barrack, huge, empty. Everybody should come in there and get undressed. And in the room was little tables. Every table was sitting a soldier with a paper, with a pencil, a pen. And we had to completely get undressed. We had to go, like the animals going in, we had to go. And whoever they thought was good for work, they called you and you gave them. We had no names, the number. Right. When I walked, I tried to cover a little bit myself. So the German woman, I felt something on my shoulder. My shoulder, like a shoulder, over gets touched. She touched, I turned around. She said, you don't walk like that. She showed me how to walk. She was dressed, I was naked. So I walked away, she told me. When I came around, so one table, the soldier called me. I gave him the number. When I came back to get dressed, so I was with one girl, since I knew her from the bunker. She was there with her husband and the kid with a baby. So we stayed together, yeah, yeah. We was on the, on the same bar uh, barrack, the same the bed, bed, bed. She comes over, she comes back, and she cries, she cries. They didn't pick me, and he is they're gonna kill me. And she begged me, don't go, don't go. I said, is it all? We don't know where we're going, but just get out from there, it's already gonna be okay. But. I said to her, if they're going to call my number and I won't show up, you know what they're going to do to me. If they kill me, I don't care, but they're going to torture me because I'm gonna, I am gonna lie to them. But she wouldn't take no for an answer. You know what I did? I went back in. I risked my life if they would recognize me. I went, I went back and I walked already straight, so she should me recognize me. And I was lucky the other table would have called me. And I gave her name, her number. And that's how she survived. So one day it was so slippery. So maybe 20, not maybe 15 girls we were holding hands to go, holding hands. I still remember I was at the end. And one girl from the other end fell. So the whole group fell. And you know, I got up and I was smiling, laughing. We were so used to the misery that it uh, didn't matter already. Yeah. We have to do something to remember what happened to them. Yeah. Well, on this, this book as well. Great. Thank you so much. You are you. very welcome. I hope you know this session means something. It does. Yeah. Yes, and, yes, and for people to know. Does. Yeah, thank you. And should never, never happen. And why?